a model engineering comedy of errors part two. This is just about the only part of this video series that went more or less according to plan at first. I'm using a four-jaw independent chuck to drill and ream the three-eighths of an inch diameter hole in the sheave. To remove the three-jaw chuck in the last episode, I showed how I used a steel bar. Now for fitting the four-jaw chuck, I'm using a piece of mahogany to rotate the chuck into the correct position on the thread of the spindle. And once again I would like to mention that it's never a good idea to use the chuck key in the hole in the chuck to rotate it. And tightening a chuck in place on the spindle is definitely not a good idea using a chuck key in the hole. If you do it this way then you're very likely to damage the mechanism. That's why I always use a piece of wood in the chuck jaws to tighten chucks onto the spindle. Now comes the fun part. I need to make this piece of metal run in such a position in the chuck so that the offset part is in the center. And this can be difficult, and in this case it was difficult. I titled this short series A Comedy of Errors for a good reason. Just about everything went wrong with this job. For some reason I found it unusually difficult to get the center punch mark to run concentrically. I used the center in the tailstock, I used the tip of the lathe tool, and eventually I did get it in the right position. But in this shot, it looks like it's miles away. This is due to the camera angle. It's not due to it being in the wrong place. Later on in the video, when I finally finished this eccentric, I put them both on the crankshaft and they were both identical. So despite what you see on the camera, the dimensions were accurate. I'm currently drilling the hole one imperial size under 3 8 of an inch. For the next part of the job, I slowed down the lathe by putting it in back gear, sprayed it with some lubricant and then used a reamer to size the hole accurately to 3 8 of an inch diameter. I purposely drilled much further into the piece of steel than I needed to. I'm doing it this way so, if necessary, I can actually make more than one eccentric sheave. Eventually the reamer went all the way to the end of the hole and now it's perfectly eccentric just the way I need it to be. Now I need to remove the four jaw chuck and refit the three jaw chuck. Normally I put a piece of wood underneath the chuck when I'm taking it off the spindle so if it falls on the bed it doesn't damage it. But in this case, the four-jaw chuck is much lighter than the three-jaw chuck and it's much easier to handle. Next, I need to fit the three-jaw chuck back onto the spindle and for this, as before, I'm using the piece of mahogany. In the previous episode, to loosen this three-jaw chuck, I had to use a piece of steel bar. I don't know how it got to be that tight. It's actually going onto the spindle very easily using the piece of mahogany. Now it's time to machine the eccentric sheave to the correct shape. For this I'm using a parting tool. And as I'm doing this I'm taking notice of the graduations on the hand wheel that moves the cross slide. First I turned the inner diameter as seen here. Then I turned the outer diameter to match the slot in the eccentric strap followed by returning the parting tool to the same position as when I turned the inner part of the diameter so I could turn the inner part of the diameter for a greater length down the bar. I didn't do this in one go because it's only a thin parting tool. I took two or three cuts to get it to the same dimension as the outer part. Don't forget I only need one eccentric for this job because I've machined away the double eccentric, so I already have one of them. To keep the terminology accurate, this is the manufacture of an eccentric sheave for a Stuart triple expansion engine. Here I'm making sure that the inner diameter is the same as the outer diameter, and yes, the eccentric strap is a perfect fit. When I tried the part in position, it felt slightly tight in the groove, so I'm machining a little bit more away to give it some clearance. 
you always need to leave some space for the oil. Now when I try the eccentric strap in position, it feels much better. This should be fine. Although, believe it or not, I have made a mistake. Not surprising on a day like today. I machined slightly too much off the front of the eccentric sheave. Why did I do this? I'm not exactly stupid, although today I think that may be an exception to the rule. I was just trying to get a better finish on the face, and I didn't achieve this. The first part of the eccentric sheave is now scrap because it's the wrong size. So here I'm using the parting tool again to machine the inside diameter for quite a good length at the other side of the second flange because I intend to machine away the part of the eccentric that I've already made. I won't labour this, it's exactly the same process, I'll just be careful not to foul up this time and take away too much metal from the front. I didn't machine away the front as planned though. What I thought I would do is saw this so I could maybe use it as an eccentric sheave for another job. But just in case, I'm still making the second one. And as before, once again I'm trying the eccentric strap on the part of the eccentric sheave that sticks out into the groove inside the eccentric strap. The mistake that I really made was the gap between these two eccentrics was too small. That's why I'm using a small hacksaw and cutting it by hand. This took quite a while. The video is running at four times normal speed. This was a good exercise, and I don't just mean physical exercise, it was a good exercise in cutting square. Because unless the saw cut is perfectly square to the face, the first eccentric will be wrong. Normally I would put a piece of wood underneath where I'm sawing, so if the blade tears through the work and hits the bed, it would cause damage to the bed. But I didn't bother with this, I was just very careful when I came to the end to slow down. I don't think putting a piece of wood there for this job would make any difference. It would be just one more thing to go wrong with this job. One eccentric down, one to go. I hope I make a better job of the second one. That's it for now, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.